Okay, in today's class, we went over Notion, all the Notion basics. I showed people how to start from a blank page, put columns on the page, put text on the page, understand the slash commands, understand that a colon will bring up the emoji picker. There's lots of other great stuff we went over, including how to move pages around, create like an archive section to put all the pages you don't want anymore into. And then I showed off my dashboard in the Future Fiction Academy which has all of my Rexy writing on it and where my databases are. And hopefully that will be enough for most of you guys to get started because we'll be using Notion quite extensively going forward with Rexy, including holding all of the information that you need in order to access Rexy and all of the Rexy writing you'll be doing. All right, so this is my notion. This is my personal notion. Underneath this drop down menu up at the top, you can see I still have access to my Future Fiction Academy okay. notion, which is where I do all of my business stuff with the uh, Future Fiction Academy. What you're seeing in front of you is a basic notion page. It is blank. When you start notion for the very first time, they give you over here on the left hand side, they give you a series of notes called reading list, journal, ask list, personal home, quick note, learn notion in three steps. And they put them all up on the, all up on this main area here on the left-hand side, like the parent area. Okay. And I've since not really needed them. So I just stuck them in their own little area called notion starters because in notion, they don't use folders. Okay. What they do is that everything is a page. Everything is a page. Even databases are in pages, okay? And you put pages inside of pages. You can put pages inside of pages. Then you can nest them all types of ways. Think of it as pages and you're stapling more pages to them. You're not putting pages in folders. It's a totally different way of thinking about things. Let's talk a little bit about how you navigate in Notion. A big thing in software nowadays are slash commands, all right? Whenever you type a slash on the page, it brings up this little, this little submenu where it shows you all the different things you can put on a page. So get used to using slash commands because it will be super fast for you to build your pages if you're used to just hitting slash and getting the menu and knowing basically what you want. Because if I want a bulleted list here, all I have to hit is the B. And it's going to bring up anything with a B in it, which includes bulleted list, right? If I want an image, it will bring up an image. The other thing you can do that is also pretty much the same across lots of applications is the colon key. When you use the colon key, you're going to have access to emojis. <laughs> we all love emojis, right? Start typing the name of your emoji, like thumbs up, thumbs down, colon, smile. Here we go. I like this smile. We'll do that one. Okay. So slashes will bring up your menus and the different kinds of blocks you can put into Notion. Colon will give you access to emojis. Let's look at the structure of a page on Notion. Here it is, an untitled page. All you have to do is hit add page on the left-hand side. Add page. It's right here at the bottom and it will give you a brand new page in Notion. There are a couple of things on this page to be aware of, all right? Add icon gives you the cute little icons, right? And here it is, it's a hole in one. Cover, we'll put a cover on your page. It usually chooses something fairly random. You can change it at any time. Choose color gradients, choose pretty pictures, upload your own. You can just, Put a link to an image that's online somewhere and it will suck it in. And then there's Unsplash too. And then you can actually move it around, reposition it. Look at this girl. I will let you know that if you want to make your own cover images from Mid Journey, the ideal aspect ratio is eight by one. To name your page, here it is. It's grayed out here, untitled. This is my test page. Now my page looks nice, right? Got a cover on it, got a little icon. I will also teach you another cool trick. Let's say you wanna put a header on the page. I just hit slash, 
header heading heading one, but I want it to be a specific color. Heading one there. And then if I put a slash yellow, I can make it yellow. You can do a lot of stuff on a page. I will show you how you can make multiple columns. Okay. The easiest way to do it is actually to write out your text and then make them all into columns. Okay. So let's say I'm going to have four columns on the page. I know this like ahead of time. I'm like, I'd like to have a layout with four columns. I'm going to put such and such in each one of the columns. So what I do is I just write column one, hit enter. Next line, column two. And now I have these four pieces of text. They're each on their own line. So they each get dominoes. And now I'm going to take them and I'm going to make them all into columns. I'm going to grab the domino on column two, and I'm going to bring it all the way over here to the end of the page. Edge of column one, boom, and drop it there. So now we've got column one and column two. Column three needs to come up next to column two. Boom. And then column four needs to come up next to column three. And then the other thing to remember is underneath these three dots at the upper right hand corner of the page, you have a lot of options here as well. Now, it seems like nobody in here is really gonna want small text, but you can turn it on if you want to. It'll make everything much smaller on the page. We don't need that. Some other things to look out for include making your page full width. So it's gonna put more stuff on your page by giving you more room on the page. So you can see if I don't have it, everything is, a little, is in the column in the middle of the page. And if I turn it on, it gets wider. Okay. Let's talk about colors. Each one of these columns, header columns could be a different thing and could have different colors. So if I hit slash at the end here, I'm going to bring up my slash commands red. We can turn the text all in here in red, or we could turn the background red. Let's turn the background red. It's something you may want to do. If you're going to spend a lot of time in Notion, you might want to make a dashboard of all of your stuff because you can easily link to all of your pages from with any other page. One of the things you can do with the slash command is you can link to a page. I have lots of pages. Let's link to one of my other pages. I'm going to click on that. I've got all these other pages in here, right? Let's see here. You can also just hit, you can also search for a page if you don't see it right in here, okay? Let's see, I want to certain link to my movie database and I'm just going to put it right there and it's just going to link to it just like that. If it doesn't end up in the column, you can pick it up and you can move it to one of the columns. As you can see, it turns blue here. So it shows me where I'm going to drop it, put it in this column one and I'll make the column a little bit bigger so you can see that whole link if you want to. So you can see, you can remove things around, you can re-space them all you want, you can color them. So this is like the basics of putting together just like a Notion page, right? So now that we have this test page, so what I've done, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start an untitled page, which was just clicking on add a page, and I'm going to call this archive. This is my archive page. This is where I'm going to stick other pages when I no longer want them anymore. And now I don't want this test page anymore. I'm going to put it in my archive. I pick it up and drop it on the archive and it will stick it here in the page. Okay. And inside the notion that keeps all of your nested elements. So there's pages within pages, but if you pick them up and you move them, they move with it. Okay. You can pick stuff up and move it around here on the left-hand side to make things more organized for yourself. I want my dashboard at the top. So I have it up there. But maybe I want my, all the books database I've started also underneath the dashboard. So I'm going to pick it up and put it right underneath it. If I want it inside my dashboard, I pick it up and I drop it on the other one like this. And you'll see it highlights. So I don't know that it's going to go in there. But then after you're done making pages, most people want to go on to make databases with that notion. Okay. We are running a lot of databases with Rexy. We actually have a database where all of our prompts go for the Rexy tool. So we use databases in a lot of ways. There's also this templates area. 
And if you click on it, there are all of these templates that Notion has put together that you can use and put on your own pages as well. And there's a ton of them in here, which are really cool. They have all types of to-do lists and projects, ways to put together projects. And you can easily just stick them in your Notion and then go ahead and change them and customize them to whatever you're working on. So I highly recommend playing around in here and like this blog editorial calendar was really cool. I could consider putting this in. I could literally lose like hours. <laughs> All right. So this page is a lot more robust and it is where I do a lot of my work in Notion for you guys, right? I do a lot of my writing in here. I do a lot of my Rexy work in here. So I wanted to make it nice and pretty. I call it my steps projects. I really like foxes. So I made this fox image in mid journey and I put the fox little icon here, the top of the page. And then I have a bunch of columns and stuff for what I'm working on. My series that I'm writing on, and we got the new series button here that Stacy gave us. I keep the button here and then I just press it when I need a new series and it creates the pages and the databases. I want to show you those too. Um, also all of my Rexy stuff is over here. That's my log page, my prompt construction page, my Notion 10s which I think are becoming Notion 20s <laughs> soon. I need prompt testing that I'm doing for you guys. I keep a bunch of prompts in here that I'm working on. All right, and then prompt examples. This is the mid-journey prompt that I was working on the other day. So when I, I wanna make examples for you guys to look at, I put them all on that page and then I make this shareable so people can see it. So I'm currently writing two series. I'm working on two series. So they each have their own series sections within my part of this no, part of Notion. I'm working on this appliance uprising series. When we create the databases, when you click on the new series button, it gives you three databases, it gives you a series. It gives you actually, it's called book analysis, but I've changed it to series analysis since technically these are for a series. Series analysis and writing, It'll be book characters and book assets, okay? So I've changed these all to series because it makes more sense to me. And inside of each one of these databases are my books for the series. So I haven't started book two yet, but when book two is going, it will show up here in this tab. So I'm currently working on this book. You guys have probably seen this before from other people. When I open up my... Notion database for each one of the chapters that I'm writing. I have information in here that I need for continuing to write and to summarize going forward. It's the book of the series. I include the act, the chapter number, these AI fields pull all of the information in dynamically from the chapter, which I put at the bottom. We've gone over this too in other Notion and other Notion classes, when I get text from Rexy and I'm happy with it and the chapter is good, I stick it at the bottom of the page chapter here. And I pull all of these AI fields, pull all of the data dynamically from the chapter below using AI. So it knows that the characters in this chapter are Archie, David, Jenny, Lex, and Clara. It gives me a good summary of the chapters that I just wrote. I haven't set up book characters yet. I will probably later on this week. Characterizations, I believe this is characterization. Yes, yeah, so it, it's going to give me the name of each one of the characters and a little bit about them. The plot points of the chapter that I just wrote. The setting, it's just going to pull that out automatically, which is nice. I set a date in the story. This is actually like far future, blah, 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 but I just chose 2040. <laughs> it was like the... And that was the end of the school year, almost summer. So I chose June to start the story. And it's just helping me keep track of the days in my story. So it's easy for me to keep track of things in my brain if I have a date attached to it. So I attach a date to my stories. And then the whole chapter, which is something that I was working on, I generated and I put it all into here. I have all of my chapters set up so that they have an image associated with them. So I can just quickly look at the this gallery of chapters and I know where I am in the story. When I'm 
generating with Rexy, and I'm working on this particular book. I set my auto write page to this page by clicking on the URL here, copying it, bringing it over to Rexy, telling it this is my auto write page, and any generated files it makes are going to come here at the bottom of the page, and I can find them all. When I'm done with them, archive. Come join us at the Future Fiction Academy. We're doing lots of really cool stuff. We're integrating Notion and our new prompting tool called Rexy. And our students are writing tons of great stuff and you can be writing it too.